Welcome, everyone, to Fergo and the Freak. My name is the Glorious League Freak, and this is episode 69. Oh, yeah. So joining me today is my co-host, rugby league author, rugby league historian, rugby league statistical guru, Andrew Ferguson. How are you, Andrew? Good, thanks, mate. Yourself? I'm really, really good. This is the best number that we'll ever do, so I'm pumped for it. Uh, are you ready for this? Yeah, I mean, this is the second time that we've done this the wrong way around. Well, yeah, you know, we're making <laughs> a habit of this. Uh, and joining us is a very, very, very special guest. And probably, I would say our biggest supporter of the podcast, Nadine. Hello, Nadine. Good evening, gentlemen. How's it going? I'm good. How are you guys? You're going to say hello to us? <laughs> keep keep the tone up, boys. Keep the tone up. Ooh, she said up. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, we, we this go. is going to be the most offensive rugby league <laughs> podcast, the filthiest, dirtiest rugby league podcast in history. So I just want everyone to prepare for it. If there is anybody under the age of really like twenty five, I would say get them to leave the room. Um, if you're under the age of 25 and you're listening to this, switch it off. Go and do, like, do something that's less offensive. Watch Pornhub or something. And, Take a cold uh, shower. Yeah, yeah. Go and just do something else because you can't be listening to this. I'm sorry. Yeah, maybe we should have sent out permission slips for adults to, to allow their children to listen to this. Yeah, we could get people to like tweet their best per- permission slip to us, like why they were allowed to listen to this one. Yeah. Hashtag put uh, your slips out. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, wow. I, I reckon, right, we start the podcast by looking at this team that Dean has started putting together, and that is the sexiest rugby league team of all time. All time. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, all time. So yeah. Who, who, well, who well start? all time asterisks because, you know, yeah. I'm young. Yeah. <laughs> like I, my mind only goes back to, you know, 1990-ish. Yeah. So, you know, you guys might have to, to fill in some gaps. That's what but... she said, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um... It would be really weird if, if you had, like, you started your list and you were like, Hmm, so Dave Brown, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm, no, definitely Thank not. Right. Um, right, so... Yeah. Will we do this in a team format or will we go oh, like... No, because my players are out of position. That's all right, that's that's all right. You can't say that, <laughs> by the way, but we could sure make it... A, we can, you can say whatever you want on this one, the filthy <laughs> podcast. Out. You can... Well, how about we make it like a top 10 instead? Would that work better? Well, I think so because, okay. look, fundamentally there is not many uh, players packing into a scrum that hit this list, Yeah. to be fair. Okay. So I've got uh, Tim Brasher. Oh, all not, right. Not, not the mullet Tim Brasher, I've got to say. <laughs> oh, the one where he looked like um, was a Shao Kahn out of Mortal Kombat 2. <laughs> That Tim Brasher. Yes. <laughs> That's hilarious. He's, he's a good looking so, rooster. What are you on about? So in, in, in between the mullet and the baldness, you know, that's, that's kind oh, of... Oh, <laughs> you've got him in transition. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, still got so, hair, but not bald. Okay. <laughs> so, so you liked him when he did have hair? Yes, but just not okay. the mullet. The mullet was terrible. Oh, so 1992 Tim Brasher. Oh, if that's what we're going with. Yeah, but well, that's what, that's when he was the top try scorer in the league and made his test debut and played by Origin and all that. He was at his peak then. Don't sully the podcast with stats. No, oh, I'm me. just you know, I'm <laughs> I'm just sort of putting people in the time frame there. You know, he, he was he was Sands mullet, but still had plenty of uh, hair going on. Yeah, we hadn't quite hit the Prince William Devon situation. Gotcha. <laughs> oh my god. So, so you've got a transitioning um, <laughs> Tim Brasher. Transitioning? I, yeah, he's transitioning. <laughs> There's nothing about him that we don't know. <laughs> nah, it's not like that. Uh, what's his name? What's his name? The Kardashian dude. What's his not name? Bruce Jenner. 
First of all, that's offensive to call him Bruce. I got gotcha. you. Sorry, Caitlin. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> but you said what's his name, so. Oh yeah, you're right. I was offensive. You offensive <laughs> bastard. Yeah, I'm a Nazi. <laughs> Um, oh, that's it. Godwin's law. We're out. <laughs> yeah, I'm out. That's my out. Um, that in early. <laughs> well, okay. So Tim Brasher, 1992. Tim Brasher. Now, well, we're going like in list from the the hottest to the I don't know no. the crookest no, or just no, other way. Because um, I'm saving the hottest for last. Okay. But having said that, everyone that it pre uh, predates who I think is the hottest player. Um, okay. It's in no particular order. All right, all right. Um, Matt Cooper. Matty Cooper, oh, yeah. Mm, yes. Yeah, he's a um, favourite of a lot of the ladies out there. Yes, correct. Yeah. Um, uh, Cooper Cronk, pre-broken nose. Ooh, what year was it he broke his nose, by the way? Because I just always remember him with a, a busted nose. I think it was 1981. <laughs> <laughs> He's always had a smash smile. Yeah. He's in no, one of those little, he's in one of those little kitty things, you know, with the, that they run around in, and he just smashed into a wall one day and <laughs> gone. Been that way ever since. <laughs> it's a birthmark. He only broke it in 2017, so it's only a recent right angle. Okay, that's just um, the last, that's just the last knuckle that has appeared. <laughs> <laughs> um, who else do I have here? Okay, somewhat controversial. Um. Shandor Earl. Okay, yeah, mm, I've seen yeah. I've seen um, admiration of Shandor Earl before. Admiration. From, <laughs> yeah, admiration. You got to be careful what you say by uh, the you know ladies who league, I guess. Oh yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Uh, Bo Ryan. Again, Bo Ryan. I think oh. that's, yeah, that that's up there. Yep. Um, Brad Fittler, but towards the end of his career. Oh really? Now, why towards the end of his career rather than because start? at the be- at the beginning he was just a bit lanky and just hadn't quite you know hadn't quite matured yet. Yeah. <laughs> so or finish school. <laughs> so, so as you mature, yeah. you get less lanky. Well, he he grew into himself. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> just trying to find a nice way to say it. He just looked <laughs> awkward. Okay. There's a confidence yeah. there. That, that was that was so much better. <laughs> you looked awkward. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> well, you just you know you think of the guy that won premiership with the Roosters versus the kid that won the premiership with the Panthers. Chalk and cheese. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. Um. And well, see, this isn't quite ten, but um, you know, when I was doing this list and I was thinking, oh, hang on, I forgot a player. Before I get to my final player, um, we can't forget Mr. Eyeliner. It's Trent Barrett. Because <laughs> he is attractive. Uh, now he could be the eyeliner. Yeah. He could not be. I don't know. Well, his but eyes pop. They were, yeah. exactly. So. He is a gorgeous know, man. Clearly working for him. Um, but heading up my list yeah. is the one and only Ryan Girdler. Oh, Gerds. Is this, is this salt and pepper Gerds or player Gerds? Again, a, a bit towards the end, coming oh, towards okay. the end of the, the career. Is yeah. it similar to Freddie in, in that the confidence exudes as they get older, and that's what makes them attractive, not necessarily anything physical per se. Right. I'm surprised that um, Albert Kelly didn't get a mention on your list. <laughs> no, no Albert Kelly. Ash Taylor? No. No. What about my personal oh. favourite, Trevor Gilmeister? Mm. Oh, mate. Close. Really close. I mean, he's a gorgeous man. <laughs> um, Paul Up Kent? With, you know, Paul, oh, how could I forget about Kenty? We should be give, making you give these guys, that, you know, marks out of 10. Yeah. Oh, why didn't we do that? <laughs> because that would be wildly inappropriate. Right. Yeah, well, it would be. That's there's the only, whole point. There's only 450 <laughs> players in the NRL. Let's go through all of them right now. Yeah. <laughs> and where would we find those details, Andrew? I really project that's your only source for information. <laughs> there we go. See, got the plug in early. That's so, what she said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, my wow. goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, jeez, man. 
Freaky, uh, moving along. <laughs> yeah. It is so, episode 69. I mean, we've got, a, we've got standards to live up to here. That's true. That's oh. true. So when it comes to Ryan Girdler, mm. on, a, on a scale of one to most definitely yes right now, uh, what would you rate Ryan Girdler? Oh, a top of the pops hottie. Absolutely. Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. So so we're going with Ryan Girdler, pre-salt and pepper, pre-coffee shop Ryan Girdler. Yeah, but even now, he's still good. But if you're thinking about playing days, just going yeah. on whilst they were playing, definitely yeah. towards the back end of the career. Okay, post-fucking up Justin Hodges. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, okay, I got you. I got you. <laughs> Excellent. So, so can we ask, who 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 would you rate as, as the best-looking players in the game right now? Mm. Oh, that feels wrong. Why? <laughs> well, because... Quite literally, some of them I could be. Don't give away. Be their older sister. Uh, that's supposed to go there. <laughs> yeah, very nice. There's no, no way. Know. There's no way knowing you're that old. <laughs> to be an older sister, oh, thank you. No, there's guys there who are 18 for Christ's sake. There's no way knowing you're that old. No, that's right. Well done. Um, Actually, you better be older than the players that are playing the game, or we're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> well, okay. Well, I'm moving away from that. Let's let's yeah. sidestep. <laughs> let's sidestep. Playing yeah, so the game right now. Um, right. Well, Cooper Cronk still plays, and despite the right angle on his nose, he is attractive. Um, what, about, what about Blake Ferguson? Do you reckon his nose is better oh. than Cooper's? <laughs> that was a shocker of a broken nose, hey? That was terrible, hey? That was really bad. And that game, it, do you remember that game? Because for whatever reason, he just kept on getting hurt over and over again. And it was like not injured. It was just hurt. And he, it, again and again and again. And then his nose got smashed. And then they gave him the Hannibal Lecter look. And it was like the poor bugger just get him off the field. Was that the game where he did his like rib cartilage or something yep. like that as well? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was just getting crunched everywhere. How about Cohen Hess? Oh, Ivan Drago, no. Any man who can hit Mitch Moses to make it look like some small toddler, toddler has just run into a train <laughs> should be on the top five on any list. I don't care what it is. You don't care? It's just That was, that was the list. sexiest thing I've seen in football for a long time. <laughs> oh. what was, who was it the other day? Um, uh, what's his face? Sivo on Zelezniak. Yeah. That, that was like... Oh, yeah. Zelezniak just looked like he ran into a wall. <laughs> that was <laughs> Did you see Zelezniak said, like, oh, I wouldn't mind it if you hit, hit me front on next time? Like, he sort of... <laughs> a little bit of shade there from DWZ. Mm, yes. He tried to be funny on Instagram, and uh, there was a photo which was fairly graphic of clearly sweat and stuff still framed coming off him and it looked like it was just mucus and crap coming out of his nose cool. and he tried to be funny and said thanks for clearing out the sinuses <laughs> oh really that's a good one actually yeah. um just looking through looking through the list i don't know what, I must say what I about a current understand. what about you're a manly fan right mm. um despite that <laughs> despite what, that right yeah. what what about um the current manly player that you like, you give the thumbs up to? Um, mm. McNuggets? McNuggets. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Close, but no. Okay. Um, Curtis Sirenin. No. Nah. Dylan you know Walker. What? They're actually a really unattractive bunch, hey? <sighs> Well, I wouldn't do any of them. Actually, get, Ruben Garrick's yeah. all right. Ruben Garrick. Yeah, not too bad. He's got such a weird name. He sounds like he should be like a rugby union winger whose parents are from South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> That's very specific. Yeah, I know. Sometimes they but, come up with things like but, that. But freakishly accurate. Yeah, yeah. exactly. They're the best. Yeah. What about DCE? Um, nah. You wouldn't be tempted to give him a hickey? No. There's a big target there. <laughs> Hard to miss. <laughs> How could no, he hide I... it? Hey, he'd need the biggest turtleneck ever. <laughs> <laughs> he'd have to wear a dickie. 
he'd, he'd get a giraffe neck. Yeah. <laughs> he'd just get a pant leg. Just he'd like have someone, he'd neck. have someone walking around behind him the whole time, continually knitting it to keep make sure they finish it so it still fits. <laughs> Goodness me. Yeah. yeah, no, look, Manly, I must say, I don't think that squad has the looks going for it this year. Okay, what about... What about, about, what about, I, was about say, what I was going to well, say, what about, say, what about some English players? Oh, yeah, English oh. players. Cause they're known for, no, uh, proper English you know. players or XNRL yeah. English players? No, no, proper ones. Proper. Well, they're none. Like gra- gravy drinkers. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> John Bateman? <laughs> no, oh, no. They're all pasty or they've got red hair. <laughs> <laughs> what about James Graham, though? He's translucent. What's she say? He's transitioning. No, he's translucent. Oh. Mind out of the gutter, please. <laughs> yeah, what the hell, man? What about Ryan Hall? He's not pasty. Nah. No, British guys, not. Nah. Okay, no British guys. All right. No. All right. Well, so, well, okay, okay. Yeah, well, go to what, Panthers players. What would you say? The best looking British player? Yeah. Uh, for me, it's it's always been Barry McDermott. <laughs> I'm going with Bob. I thought you were going to say Blake Austin. <laughs> Damn it. I should have said or, that. Or Scotland's Lachlan Coote. Come on. What about Ian Roberts? He was born in London. Oh, I don't Why did you all go silent? What the hell? I, just... <laughs> I said something. <laughs> okay. All right. So Penrith players, right? Who, who have we got in the Panthers? Oh, right Nathan now. Cleary. Careful. Mm. Oh, boy! <laughs> Foghorn Leghorn might have something to say about that. Um, oh, goodness me. Oh, Brian. Mansell's okay. Brian, Mansell. two uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, Mansell. Uh-oh. No. Maloney? No. Oh, no. Tim what Grant? About... <laughs> Tim Sorry, Tim He's retired. He doesn't count. <laughs> Jed. Jed. What about no. Campbell Gillard? No. What that moustache though? Like no. What about Sam's moustache? No. Clean shaven does, Gillard. Does the does yeah. the moustache make him better or worse? Neither. Yeah. What's what's the deal with facial hair? Like, do you have to have the goatee? Or do you, do you, can you go to the Yeah, mic? no, I think so. There's something just yeah. a bit off-putting about a Tom Selleck-style moustache. Yeah, there is, isn't there? Like when I shave and I, 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 the last thing I do is my mo, and I look in the mirror and I'm like, you, you creep. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look good. It really doesn't. It's no. like there's no way to not look like a creep with the moustache. Wow. Um... Yeah, there's nobody else really in the Panthers team that I would think. Okay, what about what about Andrews West Tigers? Oh, Ryan Madison, gorgeous human. Mm. Hey. This will be interesting. I'm I'm having to search the squad. Benji. You know he's not unattractive. Oh, that's never a good sign when you hear something <laughs> like that. Well, you're not unattractive. <laughs> <laughs> Josh oh, Reynolds. Who? Josh Reynolds. Russell Packer. Russell Packer. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah. Chris um, Lawrence. No. Which about, version how, is that? How about how about pre Robo Chris Lawrence? <laughs> <laughs> I just, I generally just think there's not a great deal of. Robbie Farrer. Mm, yes, let's go. No, no to Robbie Farrer, ta- yes to talent. I just, just realised you both yeah. said something at the same time. That was intentional. That was intentional. <laughs> I know. So I picked Luke up Brooks? on it though. Luke Brooks? No, no. And I see Moses. all these really young players. <laughs> it's making me feel awkward. All right. That's <laughs> all right. Okay. Okay, Paul Gallon. Oh, no. Cameron Smith? No. But you say no to the old ones as well. 
<laughs> because there's no talent. <laughs> Freaky's just hit the nail on the head. I hit the nail I'm on the head. All the, I'm looking how, through all the team lineups. How about coaches then? Yeah, oh. what about coaches? Like, obviously, Wayne Bennett's out, right? <laughs> uh, Paul, Paul McGregor. No. no. Brad Arthur? Coaches? No. Just trying to think. Coaches. Craig Bellamy. Oh, I mean, he'd be intense. Bellamy, no. Phil Economides. <laughs> Nathan Brown. You know what? He'd, he'd be damaged goods. You just have to leave him alone for a while. Oh, hang on. Des Hasler. No. If only Des... Trent Barrett was a coach, hey? <laughs> <laughs> John Morris. There we go. John, you got there, freaky. Actually, he's okay. John Morris is okay. Yeah, yeah. He's a good looking yeah. rooster. Yeah. Again, not unattractive. Hasn't okay, suffered so... the pitfalls of being a rugby league player, I suppose. Is... The pitfalls. Yeah. <laughs> well, he only played 300 games. Yeah, but it didn't really impact the face. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's actually true. Like, for a 300 gamer. Look, look at, like... I mean, look, different positions. I very much get that. Look at yeah. Gal. Poor Gal. He looks like he's been to war. Yeah. And yet, well, Cam Smith, not so much. Interesting. Yeah, that's true, actually. And it, it's weird, because Cameron Smith's a hooker. Mm. But that, see, that's the thing, though, is Gallon would actually make the tackles, and he'd take the hit up on every single tackle in every set. Whereas, because he's a hog. Yeah, but Cameron Smith would only touch the ball every now and then, and, and would be the second man in, usually to try and snap someone's neck or, you know, rip their arm <laughs> off, something yeah. like that. So yeah. he's, not in, he's not in the front line doing the hard work like Gal was. <laughs> Controversial. Oh, wow. Was it? Wow. Come on. We... away from that. <laughs> we were, we remember that he... tackle he did on Sam Sido. He tried to turn his head into a you know, twist-top stubby. Yeah, to that's head off. That was a bad one, that one. You never saw Gallon resorting to grubby axe on the field? <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> so, okay, so we've got your, your sexiest players list. Should we look at Arabella's list? Yeah, Okay. Yes, right. because I, I may have actually forgotten people in their in their prime. Okay. okay. Now this is a list that she has sent me. So her list is right. I think it's a top ten, right? So she's got Cooper Cronk, right? Mm-hmm. Who you had, Bo Ryan, who you mm-hmm. also had, Josh Mansour, who I guess mm-hmm. you kind of added. Well, we did say yep. Yeah, Shandor Earl. She's got him as well. Wow. Well, she she has Andrew Eddinghausen. Oh no. What? I don't get it. Yeah, I've heard that too. I've heard people say they don't get it either. I <laughs> don't get it. <laughs> she had Danny uh, Badiris. Oh. Uh, okay. she, That's interesting. She had, she had Mark Geyer. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nathan Peets. Oh, yeah, I can see that. Okay. Uh, Sean Johnson. Okay, yeah, I can see that. It's the same mould as Benji Marshall. Okay. Um, and Angus Crichton. Uh, okay. It's the eyes. I get it. The eyes. Okay, it's see, that's, eyes. In, that's interesting <laughs> when, when you hear a comment like that because, like, it's just like an insight. It's like, oh, yeah, the eyes. I get that. The eyes. Because yeah. when you go through that list, you think, like, Shandor Earl's got really nice, <laughs> like, got nice eyes. Yeah. From my perspective, Matt Cooper's got... You know, the, they're the bright blue eyes. Um, who else did Arabella have on that list? Maybe that's the Eddinghausen thing too. I don't know. E.T.? Did E.T. Yeah. have... Does E.T. have blue eyes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love that Andrew knew straight away. Yeah, he does. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a historian, but I've got to know this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Is that on the player profile? On I, the I just... I just obsess over anyone called Andrew and go, yep, they are actually as good looking as I am. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, that's really interesting. This note. Arabella and I had quite a few crossovers there. Similar similar tastes. Mm. Yeah. So that is interesting, yeah. Although uh, Mark Geyer is a bit left field for, for me. <laughs> well, he's a, he's a rugged man from Mount Druitt. You know, mm. um, so yeah, well, that's an interesting list. Now, 
me and Andrew, well, Andrew, I didn't have anything to do with it really. Andrew Look at you together, stepping away from this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the I'm thoughts busy. expressed in the remainder of the podcast are of Andrew Ferguson. <laughs> I was I was busy doing other duties. <laughs> so we put together a list of players who play well, Andrew did in the NRL. And, no, no, they they played all around the world, but they okay. played at the highest level around so the So they're world. great rugby league players. And uh, we wanted to talk about some of them today. So do you want to start okay. off, Andrew? Yeah, and these these are guys who've got, I dare say, should we say sexy names? Yeah, definitely. They got okay. me up. Okay. The first is uh, Damon and John Booby. Mm. <laughs> the Boobies. I remember them. Yeah. I remember, uh, how about Eddie and Stan Root? Oh, is that the in Root? relation to Joe? No, no, these these are Aussies and they're actually very good athletes, unlike Joe. It doesn't mean that Aussies. they can't not be related to Joe. No, it's just not in the bloodstream. You know, the, the Aussie guys are good at sport and Joe isn't. Right. So they can't be related. <laughs> Got it, sorry. Um, <laughs> these are international players. Uh, Aaron, David, Jared and Nathan Farkas. Oh, what a great name. Uh, yeah, it, it's... Uh... The Farkas's were were fantastic players. It's um, that's great. Do you, do you want me to pronounce the next? Do you want me to pronounce the next one? Yeah, I'm trying to work it out. What is the next one? Yeah. It's it's Brett Titty. Ah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. Brett oh Titty. Brett Titty. Brett Titty. When did and he when play? Did... Do you remember yeah. when he played? No, I think he was in the nineties actually. Okay. Where? Over in England for in the English competition. Right. Okay, so next on the list is Gary and Kevin Cox. No, oh, that's always going to be up there. Uh, yeah. It's not. It's not spelled with an X though. Oh, no, right. It's, it's yeah. C O C K S. <laughs> yeah. Just there was a uh, Gordon Glasscock. Yeah. Wow. Pe- Peter Handcock. <laughs> Sean Mycock. You did? Um, I, I had to. I had to. Okay. That's understandable. Um, Dick Allwood. Oh, wow. Dick Barr. Dick Daly. Oh. <laughs> uh, Dick Gay. <laughs> you guys are just teenage boys, right? Experts, yeah. <laughs> We're experts. We're experts. Uh, Dick Horn, good player. Uh, Dick Masters. <laughs> Maybe we should add that to our resume, so. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Is it about now, Nadine, where you're like, I made a mistake? <laughs> <laughs> She's also thinking, how long does this go on for? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're just past halfway. Yeah. Right. Wonderful. Get, uh, having said that, I am on um, rugbyleagueproject.org searching for the validity of these names. Okay. okay. There. okay. I, I'm, I can see. <laughs> you can look up Dick Moore. <laughs> Dick Vest. Oh, my God. One of my all time favourite players, Dick Tongue. Wow. Maybe we've got Dick Webb. I wasn't too sure if we should put that in there or not, but there you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another. Man, why not at this point, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, next one was a must. Sean Hoare. Of course. Yeah. I wonder if that's the correct pronunciation. I would hope so. Maybe it could be pronounced a, a different way that you've, you've um, made, enlightened to me in, in an earlier episode, where it could be Sean Hua. Hua, Sean, hua. <laughs> wow. Um, there's a guy who played for Parramatta called Ernie Wanker. No. Yes. Mm-hmm. Look that up. Just type in the word wank. It'll come up. He was wow. a. He was a uh, from the famous Wanker family. Yes. He actually works in the I think Northern Territory government at the moment. Oh really? Yep. Does he? Yeah. What, do you know what he works? At? Like, is he in? Uh, Public Us. relations? Is he a public relations wanker or? He might be, you know. He does yeah. make light of his name. I mean, you have to at that rate. You'd have to, yeah. Although, maybe he's a politician. 
Funny you say that because according to this, it does say that in 2015 he received a public service service medal in the Australia yeah. Day Honours. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I wrote that. that. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Well, really? yeah. <laughs> if it's on rugby it's league, it's an right? amazing yeah. website. Yeah. Yeah. So, one of the little, one of the little things not many people know about me is I actually work on that website occasionally. Really? <laughs> yeah. Um, Ikram Butt. One of the great names ever. That's uh, great. Then we've got John Breast. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was a bloke who played for Balmain in the very early days, and I, I haven't found his first name yet, but his surname was Nuts. Oh, that's amazing. But he's just unknown nuts. Unknown just, nuts. Just nuts. They just, that's <laughs> how they was known. Out well, to well, nuts. Nuts well, in given, the corner. Given that we've got a question mark there, we can say questionable nuts. Questionable nuts. That's hilarious. <laughs> we got uh, Reg Snowball. I don't get that one. <laughs> do, uh, do they call him Frosty? Uh, Wayne Kerr. Oh, the famous Wayne Kerr. Um, yeah, that's a good one. Norm Pounder. Good old Norm. <laughs> And last but not least, we've got Ivan Blow. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Man. What a brilliant list. Um, so Andrew, you... you have far too much time on your hands. Yeah, Andrew, looking up <laughs> names like that all night. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't sort of um, steered in that direction one iota. <laughs> that was all my own doing. <laughs> yeah, I had nothing to do with it. Oh wow! We, so, yeah. Well, that was Lee, comprehensive. Well, Lee I Freak thought... and I did not spend. We did not spend an hour going through that last night laughing you about it. Did not either. spend an that hour. Did, right. That did not happen. Definitely okay. didn't happen. I'm glad that it didn't happen. <laughs> no, it didn't happen. We we've got uh, we've got staff to do this for us, so we were, we were quite surprised at how um, immature they are. The interns. Mm. I mean, look, yeah. this is what happens when you give them unvetted internet access, right? Well, we gave them half an hour, and uh, yeah. wow. we're going to have to let them back into the cage now, the filthy little <laughs> things. We looked at the list, and we were just like, ridiculous, ridiculous. So childish. Yeah. So Honestly. what? So 69th episode, a very special episode. What's some of the highlights that you can remember from uh, 69? <laughs> Episodes. Um, yeah. No, oh, no. There was a dramatic pause for effect. Yep. Um, was well, that the I peak, was say, it? Yes. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> Downhill from here. We've yeah. done the pause. <laughs> I must say, uh, and I know that we have um, spoken about this at length. Yeah. Clearly the uh, episode on concussions and HIA and, um, you know, whether we've got – the right protocols in place, et cetera, et cetera, was fascinating yeah. and garnered quite a lot of conversation, which is great. Mm-hmm. And um, I do enjoy all the history stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Not to say that all the non-history stuff and all the fun banter isn't good, but I do enjoy that. Yeah. Um, we, To be honest, we're working on a uh, very epic history one coming up very soon. Oh, an epic history one. It's yeah. going to be – we're thinking at this stage it could go for two hours. Well, that's not hard, right? That's what she said. Huh? Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a very, very um, scarcely known part of the, the history of the game. Right. Just mass chaos. So it's, it's going to make for a good episode. It's yeah. craziness. We were actually – last night – after we'd looked up a lot of names uh, on on the uh, Rugby League project, we were talking about this episode that's coming up, and Andrew's done a lot of work on it. He's done so much research. He should be really proud of it when it comes out. Um, it, it's fantastic. It's really fantastic. And we've, we're have we thinking that it'll be almost in two parts as well, although the, the main history part will be on its own. It'll be like a, a two-hour episode, but we're going to have almost like a lead into it which should be amazing. So um, that will be with a very special guest as well. Yeah. Oh, very good. 
Yeah, so, um, so. Let me have a look. James Smith, I really like. You need to get him back on. Yeah, he's a legend. Yeah. 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 Um, sorry, I'm going, uh, I'm on YouTube and I'm going back through all the episode titles to mm-hmm. jog my memory. Um, well, clearly Casey, the best videos on there are the ones with that my daughter did. The unicorn, the, the, the unicorns and the rainbows and, yeah, <laughs> very good. Um, Casey Badger, amazing. Oh, oh, darling. oh, my God, of course. We love that episode. Hey, I think that, like, we've done some amazing episodes together. I think that uh, after that episode, like, we could have literally done another episode straight away with questions that we'd love to have asked her. And, and just, it was really fun to talk to her. Like, she was fantastic. Mm. I must say, after listening to her on this podcast yeah, and then listening to the podcast she does, I watch games very differently. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Very differently. Yeah. So, and that's, you know, I've never been a bit a, a ref fault or a ref bash or anything by that, um, by that regard, given that I was, you know, brought up to have more respect than that. But, um, Good. yes. Um, but yeah, just watch it very differently and, and looking, looking at those, you know, it's particularly in the episodes that, you know, she does of her podcast, where they talk about how they make certain decisions on the field and that kind of thing. And you can, yeah, it, it's fascinating. So that that uh, particular podcast really heightened my awareness around the extreme difficulties the refs have on the field. Mm-hmm. As, yeah, opposed, actually... as opposed to just being a, oh, well, it's just part of their job. It's how many decisions they need to make in the blink of an eye, which we, we a lot of people have, don't get. We've got an idea to... Uh, because we'd love to have it back on. Uh, but we have been thinking about uh, what subject we'll talk about. We actually had come up with an idea the other day that we think will be really interesting. And um, we haven't put it to Casey yet, um, but but we're thinking that we might do that towards the more the end of the year if, if she has some time free during that time. Um, mm. But, yeah, we're, because we really could have, if we had another full-on podcast subject to go straight on to. We would have messaged just straight back and said, can you please come on again? It was fantastic <laughs> because we, it was just so much fun. Yeah, she was great. Um, yeah. What else, what else, what else? Uh, as I mentioned, Ben Darwin, amazing. Yeah, that was great. Yes. Uh, I, I met him at the start of the year and went through – in read about similar sort of detail, probably a little bit more on the stuff they do there. Um, just mind blowing how f- how thorough it is. Absolutely it's fascinating phenomenal. Stuff. Uh, I've seen him speak at a conference um, a, a couple of years ago, and then had the pleasure of kind of having dinner that night as part of the conference, and was on the same table as he was, and. It was beyond fascinating, just particularly from my perspective, taking that, um, you know, his whole thought process and what he's doing around cohesion and in a corporate sense yeah. and what that means versus building talent versus buying talent and, and what the impact of that is on an organisation and how you can take, you know, everything from, you know, Manchester United and the Yankees and the Red Sox and, you know, all of these ridiculously talented uh, sporting organisations um, and looking at, you know, when they try to buy talent in, what actually happens to the cohesion overall and just, yeah, plugging that into a corporate piece is huge and he's, I think he's been really good at um, transitioning into that. So just fascinating. Yeah, look, I was, the thing that got me about it is, and it happens occasionally, not often, but I find people who have um, got in touch with me and they've told me about the things that they're doing with the data from Rugby League Project. Mm. And he's, he's told me about all the stuff they do based on a lot of the data they took from our site. And I was looking at it going, I can't believe that the basic sort of stuff that we've put on there, because it's not intense data we have on there, it's just team lineups and mm. scorers. Mm-hmm. The fact that he's been able yeah. to turn that into such magnificent data that that just blows my mind that that that's what that's what we've done is capable of, of producing. So yeah, yeah he's fantastic. Yeah, <clears throat> very and a very intelligent person. Just oh yeah, definitely. Uber intelligent a- across the board. Yeah, bloody and amazing. a great hu- and a great human. Yeah, well, Jen, of course. So 
what are you, what are your what's your favourite episodes or parts of episodes? Well, I think my two my two big favourites was the first deleted episode that you and that you had with us, <laughs> <laughs> and then the second one was the second deleted episode that we had. <laughs> We keep um, hearing about how freaky. A, that was not a loaded question, by the way. We, we keep hearing about how how freaky has you know he's been you know self censoring and stuff like that, and I'm thinking we've only deleted two episodes, and you've been the common denominator. <laughs> <laughs> that is not fair. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, it's weird because this will be the first episode people hear you on, like that has Ooh. gone to the, the podcast feed. But we've talked to you for hours and hours and hours. Yeah, and it's, it's, like it's the podcast will be recording. Up. Yeah, it's mm. been about four hours all up prior to this. Yeah, almost five, actually. There you go. Yeah. Fantastic. Which um, is a bit, bit scary. I think, <laughs> what are some of our high points? I think um, Cup and Wink. Cup and Wink was Cup definitely wink. that was brilliant. That's, yeah. that's um, a personal highlight. Um, I think when I went off on Brad Arthur and the Paramount yeah. films, it oh, was like the I unleashed the beast for the first time in the podcast, <laughs> and people tended to really like it. I think any time that there is an an uh, an unleashing on a coach and or player and or team. Um, or media received. Or media. Well, the media is a given. <laughs> I think they're too easy. The the well thought out Trent Barrett episode was another highlight. Highlight, absolutely slam dunk number one. Yeah, hundred percent agree with that. Yeah, that that was pretty special. That one. <laughs> if, you, if you listen carefully, you can hear me almost trying not to laugh. <laughs> Because I start talking really fast towards the end before I start cracking up, just to wrap it up. <laughs> yeah, I listen back yeah. and go, yeah, I'm about to lose my shit there. Wow. Um, my other highlight is when we finally got our audio sound correct, and I didn't sound like I was talking in the back of a shoebox. Or well, we could hear you generally. <laughs> well, that that would yeah. help sometimes. <laughs> our, first, our first couple of live shows where, it, like, was 75% of the audio we didn't get. Well, the the very first one, there was no audio. There was no None audio on the first one. And then wasn't there, was it the second or third one where we could only hear one of you? You could only hear yeah. Freaky. Yeah. I just sounded yeah. like a schizophrenic that was sitting there talking to himself. <laughs> we're all in the chat saying, we can't hear. Yeah, and we, we all had no idea, hey. We've, yeah. we, like, even now, we still don't really know how it works and when it works. We're just happy it works. Oh. Yeah. Well, I like see, the process. Good. I like the process at the start of every live episode where we're like, you know, we are live and go, right, is this thing fucking working? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. let's check. Can that. you can you check everything? <laughs> wow, I mean, surely you know, as I pointed out last week, peak podcasting was achieved. Yeah. With Boogie Bumper. Yeah, that was a good episode. That was so, fine. So you know, if you want to break the internet, you've just got to you know get Greeno Green. on board and Greeno's next. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we're lining up, Greeno. We, he, like, we we haven't set a date because chances are he might be unwell. But uh, True. We, or, we're lining or, it up, or I might be. Yeah, it's like it's well. like it's, it's like we share viruses, Greeno and I. <laughs> yes. We, we do have our similarities in our show. You know, it's uh, it's a legend who doesn't have to worry about viruses, and then another person is just completely conflicted by them. <laughs> sometimes you know it's a sport or a rugby league podcast that doesn't really get too much rugby league that's true yeah we've we try, been there a few times yeah we try and keep on track for the most part with rugby league but it's uh sometimes you just go down like a rabbit hole <laughs> and you don't know how you got there and you realize you've been talking for an hour and a half about what sort of animals you'd eat and it's like <laughs> I just want to talk about it all the time. I don't know. <laughs> well, now that you say that. Yeah. Oh, no, we're not don't, going don't, back there. Don't. Don't. Because I will. I'll go. I'll go. Dave, I, think we, I think that subject has been covered. Yeah. What you we say, should do. You say that. 
you say that, but I'm fairly confident it's going to get raised again sometime in the future. Yeah. You know, the thing is, though, like, just when Andrew thinks I couldn't talk about any more, like, eating of different animals, I'll tell him, like, a really long-winded story about why a certain animal is bad to eat, and he'll be like, how do you even know this? And I'm like, I don't know. (laughs) I must say, the other night where I can't remember what it was that you said, but... um, Boogie then said, wow, you know, you're like really smart. You, you, it was something about history. You, you know, you said like your historical knowledge is, is really good. And you said, yeah, I'm like really intelligent. I know a lot of stuff. And Boogie could not cope. His laugh absolutely yeah. floored me. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty I must, funny. I must admit, I'm, when, when Boogie came on, I was actually expecting that I'd be pissing myself the whole time. And yet we somehow managed to, to find a way to actually make him laugh. It was kind of like making a comedian laugh. This, this sort of walk away going, oh, I'm pretty proud. I made, I made someone funny laugh. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's always, it's always good. I, I like it when, like, I make Andrew laugh on the podcast with something like, because there's times where we're talking about <laughs> something funny and I know we're both like, we're both about to laugh, but we're keeping it together. But then there's sometimes where he'll just out of nowhere. I know I've said something and he wasn't expecting it, and it's that's the best. That's just like gold. Yeah, it's the unexpected stuff that always gets me. I, if if I can sense it coming, yeah, then uh, I'll, I'll I'm sort of immune to it and I can I can get through. But when it comes out of nowhere, what are yeah. we saying here? That's what she said. <laughs> yeah. <exactly. laughs> um. um so, I th- you know what? I was just wanted to say with the the different podcast episodes. I think if I had to put one podcast forward that I'm probably proudest of, it's the um the concussion one with Dr. Alan Pierce. I thought that that was mm. absolutely amazing. What we we managed to put together with that one, and you know, and don't um, don't be saying we. If we're honest, that that was all Freaky's doing. He organised all that, and you've been. Far more interested in in the whole HI thing. I'd I'd really ever looked at it, so uh, I I take no credit for that one. That's all you. Well, I, I think that I do. I, I, do, I, do, I just do the... something to do with it. <laughs> nah, nah it, was... <laughs> it was all you, mate. It was, all yeah, you. It was fantastic. Like I I just love that episode and uh, did did research on it and it, it really had it. It had been a subject I'd been interested in for a number of years, and I, I just. I think that that's the one that uh, I, I, I'm really proud of that episode, I guess. Yeah, so you I, should be. I uh, think other than that one, the other one I liked was the, I suppose, the rules one. Yeah, mm. that was good, yeah. That was uh, good. Also, the, the, um, the relocation and expansion talk. That one yes, was good too. Deep that one. God, that was last year or something, wasn't it? <laughs> According to YouTube, it was three months ago. <laughs> that's that's pretty accurate. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny because with episode one, we did a big talk about international rugby league, and it's like I think me and Andrew at most had talked three times before then on Skype, and one of them we did a little bit of a test podcast and it wasn't about international rugby league it was just so i think we were just talking about footy in general yeah and then and the previous other times i mean like all up we probably had talked about as much as that podcast went for it it's kind of crazy how well it's worked right from the get-go yeah well, no, the, you, think um, that you two were just old mates the way that yeah. it's all coming together yeah barely barely mentioned one another at all really prior to what was it march wow yeah like it, like what would it have been it might have been a week and a half before that because because andrew had said on his twitter feed something about what he should do a, a podcast and i direct messaged him and said listen i'm in the same boat let's just bloody do one together and he was like all right and we didn't know what we we're going to do I, like i had to buy a microphone from that point <laughs> um, like that's where we're at and, and yeah we jumped on Skype just to talk about it and then realised we could record it on Skype and so that's what we still do to this day and yeah I've I've had people like uh, James Smith actually said to me like where do you record and I said like we're in different states and he didn't even realise that so it's it's kind of uh, it, yeah it's just worked amazingly well I like, couldn't ask for 
for any better start to a podcast, really. And Andrew's fantastic. Like, Andrew has such Stop a it. great knowledge of the game. Stop it. And it's it's fantastic <laughs> to hear the stories that he comes up with, you know? I've been I've been saving all the big stories for um, off air because I thought if I if I if I plant a few there you might think yeah that one sounds like something we could talk about well, I found one the other day and that's the one we're going to be doing a big a big episode on yeah see that's always good you can mm. have those lateral teasers yes lateral <laughs> teasers are sometimes the best sort of teasers <laughs> really out of all the teasers oh yeah Ooh. oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, so apparently, Kenty, did anyone see 360 tonight? I, I did didn't not. see, but apparently, Kenty was losing his mind over the Newcastle situation and that, um, yeah, the the board is terrible, the CEO is terrible. Um, what now are you there's saying questions all about whether Mitchell no. Pierce is a, um, a up to scratch NRL captain. Well, I don't know whether <laughs> oh, that needs that, to be discussed that's, now. That's something we Buzz was going answer. on about. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's something Buzz was going on about yesterday. Yeah, um, well, I, us- well, I usually tune in on Fran Tuesday was because. On there yeah, I usually so, tune in on Tuesday because that's when Crawley's on. Yeah, Fran. <laughs> um, and he's my favourite because he usually comes up with all the stupid stuff. Now so, I'm just scrolling through the Twitter but feed now that. He didn't really say anything super controversial tonight, apparently. No, it's because it was most empty. of the time, he, it's mostly kind of because um, Crawley just goes, "Well, listen, mate, um, um, I'll just look at, at Kenty and see if he's nodding. He's <laughs> nodding. Okay, I'm on the right track. I'll just keep saying this. Is that right, Kenty? Yeah, yeah, he's saying yes. I'll keep doing this. Is that right? Yeah, yeah okay. And that's <laughs> it. And Kenty's like, "Yeah, I believe that too." Mm. Yeah. It's a it's a weird situation up there, though. I mean, I think that. Uh, but everyone's made the right decision for decision for Brown to go, but it's kind of crazy that uh, I can only think of one other time where a coach has gone when a team does have at least a shred of a chance of making the finals. And I, they don't realistically have a chance, but um, it's such a strange situation. And I think that it's weird. People are attacking the club over it. I've got to say, I, I, I can't see any anything from Nathan Brown over this whole saga that makes me think, oh, yeah, he's, he's done a good job in this situation. You know, it's just, it's madness. Mm. Yeah, it, it is. It's a situation where I think he was, it was like two warring parties. I think the players were misbehaving, misbehaving quite a fair bit and he was unable to get them under control. And I think he may have tried to get really stern with them and they just push back harder and eventually you just get this situation where there's a stalemate and no one's getting anywhere. Yes. See, I wonder about that, though, because when the Knights were on a winning streak, the media couldn't get up their backside far enough, I, quite honestly. I, I know, but still, it, it's, it wasn't the media thing. It was all just the way the club was. And when they started winning, they started getting cocky, and they probably start playing up again, and then the, sure enough, they start going downhill again. Because they weren't beating teams that were brilliant. They only had two decent wins in that out of that six in a row. Yeah. The rest is well, just it's not trash. dissimilar to the run that the Panthers had when you think about it, where yeah. they, you know, had that stellar run through the origin period, which inflated what they were actually capable of. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's you very know, good similar. on good on Nathan Brown because you know he obviously heard that they were shopping around. It got back to him, and he just called him on it and said, well, I'm not standing for that. So but, good but for him. I would, I would argue that if I'm the Newcastle Knights and I've got a coach at my club that has a year-to-year contract, every year I need to be looking at who my next coach might be because if you're the CEO of a club or the, <clears throat> or the chairman of a club and Nathan Brown ups and says, oh, listen, I've got a, you know, I've got a job offer from Wigan and it's massive money and I'm going, I'm going now. And you don't have someone lined up. Mm. You've you've stuffed up. So mm. I I don't blame the club for looking at at the very least alternatives because they kind of have to. And I, I, as mm-hmm. I said in the podcast yesterday, if Craig Bellamy's coming off contract, of course the Storm want to sign Craig Bellamy, but it's also imperative that the Storm talk to three or four or five different other people who might be the next coach as well. You've you've got to do that if you're the club, just because you can't leave yourself out 
with no coach in January, you know? No, I think it's one thing, though, to have succession planning or, you know, you know, planning aspirations with your, your eye on who is, you know, who is a, a benchmark NRL coach that you would like to have and then who are the, the next in line, who are the up-and-comers that you could target uh, if you need to and a top-line you know, existing NRL coach isn't available. So, and every, you're right, every club should be doing that. And if they're not, then their boards aren't operating um, the way that they should. But perhaps in this situation, though, is given he's been on a year-to-year contract for such a long time, clearly what has taken place is different to every other year at the mm-hmm. same point in the year. So, um, you know, one would argue that, their results this year are not shocking compared to previous years. So mm. it's a matter of then figuring out, well, what changed and what the, caused That's the what... thing. The, the results are barely any different to previous years as well. No. Um, but yeah, we, Brown seems to be pretty confident he's going to get another coaching gig. I don't know whether he will. Not here. I think the he'll be only, going back to England. The only oh, club please. I could see him going to will be the Warriors. Oh, no. Mm. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Uh, you know what? I think that I wouldn't be shocked if the Warriors are looking at Sean Wayne from Wigan. Oh. Yeah, I know, I know. And if they sign him, uh, it would be a disaster. It'd be a, just a terrible disaster. And so Warriors like, you know. Um, yeah, I, I agree with Nadine, though, about Brown. He seems really confident, and I, I don't know why. Because yeah. I look at, I look at if, you, if you give him the benefit of the doubt and say the Knights were about to screw him over, he decided to bring the issue to a head, and then things went downhill from there. I think if you look at the things he said and the way the team played and the... It, they've definitely proved done for him, but the, it's not results to write home about. I, I don't understand why he would be confident that anyone would ever employ him again as a I head coach. I think it's because he knows that the only competition out there is Trent Barrett. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but don't you love that now? So you talk about, I mean, obviously before Holbrook was signed, but you know, Titans, obviously even the, you know, now the Knights, the Warriors who, you know, a new coach has been discussed every season um, and the Dragons. It, you know, if you, at one point in time, they're all needing a new coach um, this season and every time coaching discussions have been brought up amongst those clubs, it's always, oh, Anthony Griffin would be the perfect fit for that club. Like mm. he's the first cab off the rank for all of them. Oh, now, is that Ke- just because he? Looks like Kevy's is... getting up there. Well, no, he was only ever in the in the mix in inverted commas, but was he really yeah. for the Titans gig? But it feels like is Anthony Griffin really the best available of NRL coaching stock, or is it? I don't get why he's thrown in the mix for everything. Oh, they need an Anthony Griffin style person. And I don't know whether that's necessarily the case. That's a good point. I mean, I like I think we've both definitely said him and Tuvi are the top two and I, I feel like we I, I know I feel like there's a big difference to the next cabs off the rank. Um yeah, it it is strange when you look at it that way that Griffin has not I mean, it seems like he hasn't even got close to a lot of these jobs, which is kind of well, weird. Why and would he? You know, he's why. he's on the gravy train on Fox Sports now. Oh yeah, my that's God, true. He's, he's doing commentating that. now. <laughs> he comes yeah. up for commentary. It's like, oh, Brisbane need to put in a good effort here. No. <laughs> oh, that's a great. Wow. Yeah. Thanks, genius. <laughs> well, you're really you get, good at you do Griffin voices. That's fantastic. <laughs> You, you get you get all the commentators they're all hyped up. Oh, what a great run! He goes, yeah, that was a good run there. You're like, thanks, thanks. It was Slide funny poke. the other night on the Broncos game. Oh, Milford really needs to do something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's, he's already learned the cliches. Oh, the Broncos need to be the next to score here if they're going to be a chance. Like, no shit. He's really? going to the Braith and School of Commentary. <laughs> uh, no, can't knock Braith. Braith's a comedian. Oh. 
no one knows it yet, but he's just a comedian. Mm, he doesn't he, know it yet. He, he dropped his best line the other day. I put it on which, Twitter. Did you see it? Um, I took it out of context. Oh, out of yes. context, he said, yeah, he's dropped two balls, but he's coming back hard. <laughs> yes. That's just classic Braith. Oh, you know, if, if you want to have a laugh when Braith and Astor is doing his commentary, every time he talks, you then got to imagine him just elbowing the commentator next to him, like smiling, <laughs> like, hey, can you believe I said that? Let's like, bring him things up on that. And if you do that, it is fucking hilarious because wow. every single comment he says and he's like, oh, yeah, you know, they need to score three more tries, but the next team to score will probably win this one. And he just does the elbow to the guy next to him like, oh, how about that one? I'm oh, not I a doctor, it. but. Yeah, I'm not a doctor, but is a classic <laughs> right the nasty one. What's another one? The space on the left. That was good, right? Yeah. The braithisms. I love yeah, it. Yeah, so it's yeah, this whole coaching saga. It just See, I think it I think the reason all the time. Come back to it. I think the reason why Griffin and Tuvi to a lesser extent keep getting mentioned is because the teams who are currently in line to, you know, be getting rid of a coach are usually the teams who are playing shit. And they need someone in who's going to bring a bit of discipline into the club and, and firm them up and make them a bit tougher. Mm. And that's something that Griffin is kind of, that's pretty much the only thing he's known for. Mm. And I think that's why he constantly gets mentioned all the time. Mm. You know, he, doesn't, he doesn't get linked to you know going to a top eight side when they're looking at getting a new coach. That'll no, never that's happen. True. It'll always get linked to the crappier ones. Yeah, it's just strange. It's so strange because even it's... Griffin is heads and shoulders mentioned more often for any available coaching gig than anybody else. Yeah, I'm surprised he, he does. I mean, especially when you've got talent like Jason Taylor out there. I exactly. remember when he came remember when he came to the Tigers, he says, I'm gonna fix their defence and didn't. And you got Cartwright. Well, he's now assistant coach of the Roosters. He's found his calling now, he's back to where he should be, which is an assistant coach. Yeah, you that's what, what I mean. They're good you know, assistant really, coaches. It's really weird, though, that, like, I, I find it interesting when you have people that are, uh, like, assistant coaches and you get a lot of people say, oh, he's really he's going to be a good coach. He's going to be a good coach. And they honestly have no idea because it's such a different job. And you can be a really, really good assistant coach, and we've seen it time and time again, mm-hmm. get the, the top job at another club, be an absolute disaster, and then go back to being an assistant coach somewhere else and be back to being a really good assistant coach. Mm. Because some people, they don't want to deal with the the, the roster management. Mm. They're very good, you know, analytically. They're very good at, um, you know, teaching, you know, their defensive shapes and their attacking plays and all of those kinds of things. But when it comes to actually having to manage the roster and managing the team and managing managing up into the board and the CEO and even managing the media, they're terrible at it. So that's why they suck. I think the yeah. best example of a magnificent assistant coach and woeful first grade coach is Peter Sharp. Yeah. Like every, everywhere mm. he went as an assistant coach, the teams were just successful. But when he became mm. a head coach, plummeted. Yeah, that's and true. He constantly said he doesn't like being a head coach, even though he's had roles in the past. A mm. lot of it was because he got pushed into that role because there's no one else available and they needed someone short notice, and that's what he did. But he just loved being assistant coach. Mm. The only time so, he ever had a better than 40% win record in his coaching career was, unsurprisingly, at Hull. <laughs> that's interesting. Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, Hull is a quality side, so that's why they'll win. Wow. Well, the mighty oh. bottle throwers. <laughs> <laughs> we dominate. Anyone from Hull knows I'm, I'm telling the truth. We're the best. Uh, honestly, Hull fans are the best fans in the world. Like, when the game starts getting away from us, we offer to put the, the goalposts away. It's fantastic. <laughs> we donate money it... by throwing it onto the field, <laughs> coins. Just doing civic duties, right? We Was recycle. The... By throwing our bottles and cans onto the field? Like, I don't understand why people give us grief. Was it Hull FC um, a year or two ago who decided to have their away jumper look like a bunch of council workers' uniforms? Oh, they were fluoro cool. green. 
there was one of them. I can't remember who it was. It might have been, but I can't remember it. I mean, they well, were. This is the thing. People whinge about some of the footy jumpers you get in the NRL. Super League take it to another level to the point where they're actually trolling because some of their jumpers have zero resemblance to yeah. their traditional colours. It's like Ooh. St. Helens, and it's like, yeah. oh, he's running out in blue stripes. It's yeah. like, what's going on? Yeah. It'd be like, yeah, it'd be like watching St. George come out and they're wearing green and pink. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? What is this? Oh, that was South the other night, the women in land ground. Yeah, what do they call that? A, they sometimes call it, what was it? Um, blood and something else. It just sounded like a horrible thing to be mentioning at that time of the year. But they went with pink, <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> Episode oh. 69. We'll remember this one. Wow. 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 Jeez. That is just... It wasn't me. It's just what the club does. I just, it just <laughs> yeah. seems to be a horrible thing. Is it? You know, the Sydney Swans do it. They call themselves what is it, blood and bandages, whatever it is. Why do you yeah. have to like, call yourself? They're the bloods. They, yeah, but they do that because they realise that Swan just sounds completely pathetic. But no wasn't one's it a scared reference to swan. the old South Melbourne? That's what it's a reference to. Well, call yourself South Melbourne and the Bloods. Don't call yourself bloody Swans then. Don't put a don't put a pathetic bird on your on your jumper. <laughs> I didn't. I've never understood the swans reference. To be stupid. fair, stupid. It's stupid. It's so dumb. There's no relevance, unlike the Perth Quokkas. No, especially when swans. I'm are telling you, we best. need to. We've got to get that catching on the Perth Quokkas. It's going to happen. <laughs> Just a mean little quokka, but like he's mean, but he's still ridiculously adorable. What would the name of the mascot be? Would it be like Quentin the Quokka? Quentin. The quokka. Quentin. <laughs> Quinn. <laughs> you need that that alliteration. There's not many names that start with Q. Quinn or you the could Quaker. Just, you could do C or Q, like you could do like Curtis the Quaker or Curtis. Uh, Kurt, Kevin the Quaker. Hang on, yeah. hang on, hang on. What we need to figure out yeah. is what is the gender of the Quaker? Gender neutral. Everyone's gender happy. neutral. Yeah. Right. So it's a they. Okay, good. We've got to get yeah. the right so, like, pronoun. Kimberly the Quokka. Uh, Quincy. Quincy? Yeah. Quincy the Quokka. Wow. Okay. That might work. I don't know, actually. <laughs> don't know about that, actually. Quincy the Quokka. <laughs> How about... You know, they'll probably end up with some dirty big wallaby, I reckon, actually. As, well, like, yeah. that, that's probably what the mascot would look like. It's like, you know, when uh, New South Wales put in there a thing where they wanted to have the um, wattle as a, and they, they come out and the logo is actually like a fucking lotus flower. But they're like, oh, no, the no, Warata, no, not wattle. Oh, yeah, Warata, yeah. And it's like the <laughs> You're lotus. You're confusing me. Wattle yeah, is so. Australia. It's gold. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> so you reckon a wallaby, I call him Warren the Wallaby. Warren the Wallaby. Yeah, well, you know those big a... angry red, red, those big red rock wallabies, you know, those big ones. I think that's they'll probably go with something like that more than a quokka. What about a tree kangaroo? A tree kangaroo? Yeah, maybe. Honey badger? <laughs> no, they're overrated. No. Uh, yeah, but, you know, Daniel Ricardo comes from Western Australia and he uses that, so maybe you could tie it in. He could be an ambassador for him. I mean, he earns more money in a year than what that club will ever make. I don't he know. makes more I... money in a week than what that club will make. That's right. Outstanding. Well, what else is there in Perth? I mean, you've got the wineries or in WA if you want to. Well, as I said, the episode, out. as I said ages ago, you should call them the FIFOs. The FIFOs? No, I yeah, yes. The Perth FIFOs. Just yeah, but then plane. they have to wear high vis, and the Knights already do that one round a year. No, you, you can mix. I mean, you have green high vis. Green. <laughs> Get that yellow really hurts your eyes. <laughs> yeah, you, you, go, you go with a slightly softer lime green. <laughs> and they could get around in that. And their, plane, their mascot could be a plane. And they could just be sponsored by Qantas and Jetstar and all the, like, you know, all those places. Mm, John Deere. Yeah, all the fans would just come from some other state. It doesn't matter. They just fly in and fly <laughs> out. Who cares? I, I don't understand why is we are even debating this because... You know, they've got a name. It's the Sharks, the Perth Sharks. That's the who Perth it's going to be. Yeah. Right. yeah, that ain't happening. 
<laughs> I don't know. It rained in Gosford. It can rain. It can rain at Shark Park. No, the well, sh- Sharks have already built this stadium. Yeah, they've they've already built it and they own it already. They're, they're one step ahead of Norse. Norse never got around to that point. That's true. They yes. they didn't get a chance to because 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 it rained. Yeah. Damn but, that rain. This is the rain. Imagine, well, imagine, could well, you imagine the rugby league landscape now had it not been for the rain? Yeah, there'd be no Penrith Panthers apparently, and North Sydney would be there, and they probably would not have won a premiership at all. <laughs> Still, <laughs> that's a given. Mitchell Pearce would have played his whole career there because he'd be a brilliant North Sydney player with Mitchell Moses. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be the Mitchells. That has to happen at some point in time. They'd be coached which, by Anthony Griffin. Which which <laughs> club would sign both of them at the same time? Titans. Parramatta would. Parramatta I was, was going to say para, surely. Yeah. yeah. Imagine that spine. You get Gutho, Pierce, Moses, and someone else. Oh. Oh. And someone else. Well, you've got Reed Marty. He's the next big thing, right? Yeah, but he he's actually looks like he's a decent player. You need someone who's not. Yeah, but give him time. They can still screw him up. Uh, I don't know. He looks to have potential. It's a bit of a worry. Right. He might Maybe have to move get, on somewhere else, eh? They could get Andrew McCulloch in there. McCulloch. Now, there's a spine. <laughs> that, yeah, he'd be They could take one of, the, one of the dozen hookers that Penrith have and don't need. Yeah, enough about the preseason, all right? <laughs> yeah, that'll be all out on video in the off-season. Yeah. <laughs> Just as one court case is wrapping up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you got to keep them fresh. <laughs> wow. Come full circle. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Oh, see you We're seamless. Are. Seamless at 69. Yeah. What are we going to do for episode 70? Uh, we should talk about rugby league in episode 70, eh? <laughs> like, we should do a super serious episode yeah, for episode if, 70. See if we can find any sort of dignity in episode 70. Yeah, that'd be, what, that'd be what should we What should we talk about in episode 70, Nadine? Well, well we've covered this previously. Um, you need to do your next State of Origin era. Oh, yes, yes, that's got to be done. Yes, yes, yes. Um, more, more work for me. Maybe we can do the – listen to me, we. <laughs> Maybe you can do. <laughs> you are the boss. <laughs> um, I feel like I'm in a uh, – I'm at a work meeting. Um, maybe it, we I can do the, the end of – you know, the, the end of year wrap almost, although it's oh, still two yeah. weeks out. That'll so, happen. yeah, no, that, we'll have to wait for that. Um, what else, what else, what else? So we've got State of Origin, we can do um, – There oh. was one – we, we would like to get some uh, ideas from um, a lot of the professional journalists that are out there. So we're thinking about doing things like best 10 hairstyles in rugby league. <laughs> Oh, are we not? 10. Are we not doing that as part of the the podcast uh, awards? You know, best yeah, we could style. do that. Yeah, best yeah. Ever. We, we best top to, knot. <laughs> we, still, we still have to do an actual episode live, not just calling a game live, but an actual live episode. We still could do one of those yet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We've tried that a couple of times and failed miserably. Really bad. <laughs> just, just so you know. They haven't been deleted forever. <laughs> nah. This isn't like that podcast that uh, they're in court about. What's that one called? We talk about it sometimes, Andrew. What's that one called? Well, we've got we've got three episodes that are on the shelf. Yeah. Two, two of which were live ones, which we deleted, which obviously we won't put back up, but we might find snippets from them and, and publish them later. Yeah, just the worst bits. <laughs> What was the just third the one? What's the third one? I'm like, Frankie, what, what's the third one? No, we had the, we had the first two with, with Nadine. Yeah. And we had, uh, what was it, episode 47, the failed episode. The failed episode. Oh, is that the, the, the silent one? No, no, no. We, no. We, we started it out and then we ha- made a hash of it and just started talking absolute garbage. And then we went, right, oh, that's gone for about an hour. Right. 
So let's just do it. Let's just redo it properly the I, second time around. I remember that. Yeah, that was. It just descended, and we were something happened though. I can't remember what it was, but something happened, and we we're just like, oh, should we keep going? <laughs> you should. So you should cut those into um, like a montage style episode. Yeah. Maybe that can uh, be for episode one hundred. That's kind of the plan. Yeah, we'll do that somewhere when um the best when we can't bits. be booked. Yeah, when, <laughs> the best when we've only never were. It'll be the, the lost tapes. <laughs> we'll get all oh. the com- we'll get all the talk about Nadine talking about all the animals she'd eat. Yeah, <laughs> we'll put that in there. <laughs> the swear, Wonderful. the non-stop swearing you were doing. I couldn't oh, believe it. Was it. Atrocious. <laughs> Such a sailor. <laughs> half, Such half, a sailor. Half of the sea bombs that the freaky said the are right. I want those lost tapes. Oh yeah, I, man. He's dropped there, a couple. Just there a couple. was three the other day. Three. Yeah, yeah. On episode. Yeah. Yeah, so and it wasn't was even... within the space of ten minutes. <laughs> it wasn't even the worst thing I said in that episode, hey. I, like, when I was listening to it back, and at the time it was very funny, listening back to it was very funny, but there was the one rant that I went on that I kind of thought this could really upset quite a lot of people in a certain country town in New South Wales and... I don't know that we should really be doing that right now. <laughs> Self-censoring. Still, fuck, I love still it. fuck you, damn worth. <laughs> and we will leave it there and move on. Yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> Let's never was... speak of it again. Yes. Oh, it'll come back again. <laughs> no, I won't. Never, ever. <laughs> That's still there. I'll drive um, around that place like I drove around Townsville. Anyway... <laughs> Fine, Andrew. Put him back on the straight and narrow. Uh, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, hang on. So, you, you started this episode, Frankie. Am I supposed to wrap it up, or what's the deal? Oh, yeah, I've done my work. I've... All right. All right. Come on, well, look, let's, we know how this do... works. I basically turn up, I fucking, you know. Collect your I'd check. Chuck... Yeah, I'd chuck in the laughs. I pick up that fat check, and then I, uh... oh, should we tell everyone what I bought? Um, oh, you did promise that. Yeah, okay. If you promised it, you better do it. Yeah. So people were... I, I said that I was buying something ridiculous and stupid. Um, I've changed my mind since it arrived. It's probably the best thing I've ever done in my entire life. I bought myself a an exact to scale replica of Thor's hammer out of the Avengers. Um, it's made of metal. It's got a leather strap at the bottom. It's the exact same size as Thor's hammer, and it's the best. It's the best thing I've ever bought. It's fantastic. Is it the um? Is it is it a replica of, of actual Thor's hammer or just Chris Hemsworth's Thor's hammer? Well, he is Thor. What are you talking about? No, no, he plays for the Toronto's Toronto Wolfpack. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, this is a, actual Thor's hammer. Actual it's Thor. Got, it's got like, uh, it's got like, I don't know. Shoots, shoots lightning bolts and shit. Yeah, yeah, it does. Fuck. I'm actually now the uh, rightful king of Asgard. Lovely. Mm. We're gonna have yeah. to, we're gonna have to find a way to abuse that power. Any ideas, Nadine? None fit for broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> they are now. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was thinking, like, we could just get my hammer and just lay it on things. That could work. Yeah, yeah. So, Trent Barrett's got his Bunnings chairs and I've got my hammer. <laughs> yes. I'm actually they're, thinking they're equally, about... equally important. Yeah, I agree. I was actually thinking about when they've got the equivalent of Comic-Con uh, in Sydney, it's called something else. It's not called that. I was actually thinking about dressing up as Thor and going to it, but this hammer's Isn't that fucking supernova. Is it supernova? I think yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, this he- this hammer's fucking heavy. Hey, like <laughs> when you pick it up, you're How like are you getting that on the train. <laughs> oh shit! Well, that's the thing. Um, and so like I would have to lug that thing around, which I can do because you know, I've got some guns that's on. That's what she said. Me. Exactly. So. <laughs> used to lift and heavy things you know um so but i'd have to buy like a a um 
a blonde wig so it looked like Thor, and that's all I'd really need. I thought you were going to say that would be a lot of work. <laughs> nah. nah. Have I've you got, got a blonde co- wig here somewhere. You've got the costume and the sandals? Uh, I haven't got the sandals. The costume wouldn't take much. I could throw together a Thor costume. Knowing, knowing the the vintage you are, I'm surprised that your mother what doesn't have a pair of sandals for you. Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. What the fuck are you talking about? The vintage I am. Yeah. Only... When when you know your age. Yeah. I'm not revealing. I'm just saying I know your vintage. Yeah. Yeah, I'm surprised your mother doesn't have a pair of sandals for you because mothers around that period used to put all their kids in sandals. Stop. Stop. No, I was never a sandal wearer. You hey. lucky bastard. Yeah, never. You were the only one. Yeah, I tell you what. I tell you what. I was the lucky kid that, I, and it's weird because I buy. I I've looked at buying a lot of Nike shoes recently, and I'm looking back at some of these shoes that are classic shoes. I fucking owned them when I was a kid. Hey. I'm not and even joking. Oh, new again. Yeah. And I like, they've the, oh, these were classic. And uh, uh, and I'm like, yeah, I had them ones. I had those ones too. I had those ones too. I never had sandals. In fact, I, I never used to wear, I never missed used to wear thongs until I was, I was like about 27. You you missed out. Yeah. But sandals were the shit. Really? Wow. <laughs> did you get around, did you get around looking like Jesus in your sandals? <laughs> Yeah, because I had a little hammer because I was doing carpentry stuff. I wasn't trying to blow people up with lightning bolts out of an hammer. <laughs> a little hammer. I was just like knocking up little bits of cabinetry and making little chairs and stuff and, you know, knocking, knocking nails around. Oh, you mean actually actually working? Yeah, I wasn't doing yeah, that. Yeah, that, that's, the, that's the only link I would have to Jesus. Okay. Is I yeah, know how to use a hammer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was a better carpenter than I was. Because you know he's a he's, yeah he's he's a famous carpenter. I'm not a famous carpenter. That's true. But that like, is there any? And I, we're going right off track here. Is there any historical record of the stuff that he used to build? Like, did he build houses or did he build like I don't know bars? <laughs> I feel and stuff? I feel inclined to <laughs> say a cross. That's not on rugbyleagueproject.org. <laughs> <laughs> I feel inclined to say that he probably built a few crosses. <laughs> oh jeez! Oh jeez! <laughs> Someone had to. You've got to get the local carpenter in. Who else is there? Oh. Uh, Twenty-two edit point. <laughs> 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 oh jeez! Wow. Yeah. yeah sorry, Has there been any Jesuses that have played in rugby league? No, well, they're is Jesus, it... aren't they? Well, that, that, you the know what? Same, I guess. I, I think there may have been like a. I guess no, there South been. American. There hasn't. Not yet. No. Oh. I thought there had been. Has uh? We've has had a few. Been Zeus? Had Zeus or a Thor? There's got to have been a Thor. No. What about um? What are, what other godlike names are there? Zeus, Thor. Um. I doubt there's been a Hades. <laughs> Imagine, imagine calling your kid Hades. Like, if I wasn't going to call my name my kid after Hakeem Olajuwon, I I would call it Hades. Wow. Uh, no, no Hades. No Hades. Oh, that's no. a shame. Oh. No Thor. Damn it. No Hakeem Olajuwon. Oh, damn it. There is a Michael Jackson. Oh, oh, that's right. He played for the West Tigers, didn't he? No, England. And there's there's also a Ronald McDonald who played for New Zealand back in the day. <laughs> oh, was there really? Yeah. So how far back are we going? Like, was it before Maccas? Uh, Nineteen ten, I think. I'll okay. just have a look. I'll have a look. That's not too bad. Yeah. Do you know if you've ever seen the movie? Yeah. There you go. He, he played for New Zealand, nineteen oh nine, nineteen ten. There we go. If he actually played for seen, Norse as well. If you haven't seen the movie The Founder, you should watch it. Oh, it that's is, great. It's a fantastic movie. Hi. Hey? Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Ronald McDonald. And if you haven't seen the documentary Another Bloody Sunday, you're missing out. Mm-hmm. What's that you, about? It's about it's about the Doncaster Rugby League team in England trying to oh. score their first win of the year. <laughs> and it's the dreariest, most miserable thing you'll ever see to the point that it is absolutely hilarious. 
the narrator at the very start says he talks about all these teams in the in the northern part of England who are you know big time big time winners in rugby league. He he goes, they're all winners, and then there's Doncaster. (laughs) They don't win. It's so blunt and brutal. It's fucking fantastic. You got to check it out. It's on YouTube. Okay, we'll put what we'll do is we'll put the link in the the podcast description so you can watch it. Yeah, oh, it's it's brilliant. Getting fancy, putting stuff in show notes. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah we'll do that now. We've got, uh, we've still got the. If you go into the show notes, um, you can still take part in the poll that we put together. We'll have to do that. Actually. The show notes is actually where the only really relevant and important part of our podcast is. Yeah, you can probably just read that and just forget everything else. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> press play, turn the volume down, just read the show notes, and just leave it go. And go, okay, I've got the crux of what this is about. I've got I've got them down to a fine art putting them together. It takes me like about two minutes, and I've got it all ready. Yeah, they are professional as fuck. Yeah, except when I do spell mistakes occasionally. That sucks. Yeah, well. <laughs> You're a right. human. Yeah. Well, well, well I'm shout- actually a part god, but you know, <laughs> god of thunder. Just I don't <laughs> want to correct you on it, but I am the god of thunder now. Yeah. Right. right. Um, got it. Any <laughs> shout outs we want to do? Anything that's... That's... Silence. Silence. Yeah. Well, the starting well, block. The starting block, definitely. They're going to be, well, if you're listening to this when we've put this out, on the Wednesday you'll probably be listening to this. If you're a real fan, if you're not, what the fuck are you waiting for? Um, <laughs> the starting block is going to be on Wednesday night, and you should listen into them. We had Boogie Bumper on the other day. It was a I very th- fun episode. I think um, we broke him. I think we did, a little bit. Yeah, so you couldn't do two of his daily shows. Mm. Yeah. He said yeah. scheduling, and I mean, I think we kept him up till almost three in the morning. I think we broke him. He had to bugger. up. Yeah. Yeah, it's your fault. So, sorry, everyone who, who likes uh, the Daily Boogie. We didn't mean it. <laughs> but, uh, what uh, else can we plug? What, have you, you got anything to plug, Nadine? Anything you want to, anyone you want to give a shout-out to? Anyone yeah, you want to... Sh- give a shout-out to Arabella. Yep. Um, I feel like we're kindred spirits based on our lists yeah. and our taste in shoes, yep. which we figured out through Twitter mm-hmm. that are similar. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of banter with Richard Cranium, so I'll say hello to him as well. Mm-hmm. And James Smith, we've been chatting with him a bit as well. Yeah, so yeah, that's it for me. Okay. Nice. Anything you've got to plug, Andrew? How about your Patreon? Yeah, okay. I'll do it again. This will be the second time tonight I've done this. Yeah, yeah. Just on another podcast. Full credit to the boys. Make sure you check them out. I put some good stats on there tonight. Um, go to www.patreon.com RL Project. Make sure you type in Project. If you type in RLP, you will not be reading something that's suitable for work. Um, yeah, so go in there, make a donation. Um, it could be one or two dollars a month, or it could be three thousand dollars a month, like Nadine does. Um, <laughs> I'll take either. I'll take either. either so you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, go over there and help me out. That'd be awesome. Nice. And rugbyleagueproject.org, of course. Uh, fantastic website. The number one sports statistic website in the Southern Hemisphere. Fantastic. Um, has Ooh. all of the rugby league stats you could ever want. It's amazing. It'd, it'd be the number one rugby league statistics website in the entire cosmos. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Um, not, I'm not saying that with any bias whatsoever. No, but it's probably true. I mean, I don't know what's happening on Alpha Century, but uh, we'll find yeah. out one day. Um, and and uh, LeagueFreak.com. Yes. I, tell, I, us, tell us what's on there. My name's the Glorious League Freak. Um, I own LeagueFreak.com, and I write my opinions about rugby league on that website and have been doing now for well over a decade. Um I'm willing to say that I'm the leading mind in rugby league and uh, humble as well. So I don't I don't like to talk it up beyond what it is, which is the epicenter of the game. And people need to remember too that even though Freaky and I do a lot of world class writing, we are not journalists. No, I've actually got a, a, a section of my website. I am not. I think it says I'm not a journalist. It could be titled I am not a fucking journalist. Um, 
and it, it, it spells out why. Because I used to, people used to say, oh, you're a Rogan journalist. So I used to send them the link, and it, it says, if you've been sent here, you've, you've claimed that Leak Freak is a journalist, and he's not a journalist. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you can go and check that out if you want. I guess I could put that in the show notes too. Why the fuck not? Absolutely. Why not? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. We'll, we'll, uh... Thank you to everybody for listening. Thank you for the uh, support in the 69th episode that we've put together. Thank you to Nadine. Thank you, Nadine, for coming in. Oh, thank you for having me. It's amazing. You're a fantastic guest. You're like, you seriously could be on here full time. That's how good you are on here. Aren't you? Oh, thanks. Couldn't take over from you guys though. Well, you could actually. I might try. It's, really <laughs> it's so easy. It's so really easy. Um, no, you boys, you boys do a stellar job. Really? Well, we we do a job. So yeah, Andrew short. just sent me a thing saying I've got to stop the recording and to remember that. I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I figured it'd be unprofessional if I said it on air. Yeah, we well we won't do that. We'll no, uh, no. make it all seamless and stuff, and people won't even know. What, that we actually just press record on Skype. So, um, so yeah. So, thank you to everybody for listening. This has been the 69th episode of Fergo and the Freak. We expect to do another 69 episodes this week. So, keep listening in, and we will catch you all very, very soon.